So I think going to Rome was really cool because it just, it's a different perspective of Italy, right? It's more touristy. Um, it's definitely a bigger city. It's a lot more compact. So the first time we went to Italy, you know, Tuscany is more hillside and farmers and, and super rustic and, and honestly kind of a little more up my alley. Rome was a really cool city though. And in that you can travel to so many places a lot faster. You know, you, uh, transportation is a lot easier. Walking is a big thing, bicycling is a big thing, scootering in and out of traffic going 80 miles an hour is a big thing. Um, we all made it back, thankfully. Uh, but it was, it was kind of cool to see, I mean, you do see the staple dishes, you see you know, the carbonara, you see the alla Galicia, you do see cacio e pepe. Um, but street food's a big thing, and, and it's kind of weird for a, a country that values like sitting down for hours and having a meal to see the, their version of fast food, which is street carts and little hole in the wall places where you can just get, you know, some, it's their version of an arancini, which is called subli, and um, it's basically fried rice balls that are flavored in different ways and different focaccias, and, and we just knew, like, even their version of fast food, you still sit down for a second, you still eat it, you still have a sense of community, and that's not lost any time you have a meal, and that's the big thing we wanted to bring back, is those kinds of dishes and inspiring a sense of community while you eat it, not just, I gotta get in my car and shove something in my face real quick. So I feel like we've been on a couple of different food trips and obviously t some together, some apart. And every single time we do that, when we link up, it's like, what'd you have? What'd you eat? Where were you? What, you know, what was, what was the, the best thing? What, what was the worst thing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, what, what were the flavor echoes? Like, what, what can you remember the most? Like, what, tell me, like, tell me every detail that you have. And we've been doing that a lot over the years. Over just multiple just places that we've years. gone to eat. And, yeah, exactly. Just so many different things about food. So when he told me about Actually, the Zuppolis that he tried, I was like, man, that would be a really good Arancini. Like, how can we make that, but also put our spin on it, our twist on it? So I wanted to do the Casu e Pepe Arancini, which are technically made in the style of Zeppelis, right? With a little more texture on the inside, a little more chew, a little more bite, but also really crispy on the outside. So that's kind of how we got the concept for that dish. Well, it, it, the ribs are kind of fun because Damien has been playing around with different variations, and he's got like 73 recipes for ribs and we both have a very deep appreciation for Maro's. And, you know, in a lot of these ones, we knew, I mean, once he tried the one with the Maro, it's like, that's, we're gonna go down that road and, and play around with that. I mean, because like I said, we both really love Amaro's and that's something that we would love to bring more of an awareness to, just in general, of what an Amaro is and how helpful it is and how amazing they could be, but how you can also use them in a culinary standpoint. And uh, it, we've had a lot of fun playing around with that. Yeah, to kind of piggyback off of that, I feel like, at least I haven't seen it, even in Italy, people don't really put Amaro in food. It's more something you have after your meal to help you kind of digest and, you know, go about your day and feel a little bit lighter. But it, to me, it was like it had everything that you want in like a glaze or a sauce or something that would go really well with pork. And we do pork really well. Yeah. Right? Sackett Farms, uh, we can go, we can talk, we can talk for, you know, for days and days about pork and why it's good and why we love it. And I really wanted to make something relatable. So ribs, right? I mean, being so close to Texas and, and how they do ribs and how even, you know, if you, if you really go back into what Native Americans did with how they prepared animals, they ate ribs all the time. It was something they had all the time. So I really wanted to make a play for something familiar, something new, and then introduce a Amaro familiar for everybody. So when they ask, and the conversation is, what's an Amaro? You know, the service staff that we're going to have here is going to be educated to be able to tell the guests, like, we have these really delicious ribs, and this is what Amaro is. And it really brings to light something really cool and something that we've experienced over the years with the Maros and then some, keep it keep it really like back home everybody loves ribs and really blend that two those two worlds together and really make it something special. Well we plan to have eight to ten Amaros here you know and, and like I said just kind of spread that awareness of what they are and that's kind of a cool easy thing right it's almost a cheat of like oh you're gonna get the ribs it goes with the Maletti Amaro get that with an ice cube and an orange wedge and you're having a good day right um, but it would also pair really well with the Nonino Amaro like easily you know so um, that's kind of the other cool thing about it is we're going to have a good Amaro selection. So as we're educating people that you can use it in a culinary aspect, most people don't know what it is in the first place. So that's kind of the exciting thing about that, to be able to educate on something that we freaking love and get excited about. The Porchetta is something that, I mean, that's, that's straight up Damien's brainchild, man. That is something that he's played with and worked on. And, the, and you know, he definitely had that that move where, you know, we had that big dinner with, with Tom Sackett and, and, and his wife and uh, Christy, and, and it was a really cool sit down and to see 
that dish executed for the first time at that scale for the guy who raised those pigs was such a cool moment. And we knew, I mean, when we tried, it was like done, you know? And so that was just, that's, that's something that, it's a complete brainchild of Damien and nailed it. Really fantastic thing. I think what's really good about it is it's a celebration of pork and it's a celebration of the people that grow our pigs for us and kind of just showing them like what can be done with it and how versatile it can be. And then using the colonnata butter that we found in Italy, bringing that back home and really making it something special and integrating it into the pork that we have. It's, I thought it was really something special. I thought it was really cool. Really good. And then honestly with the dessert, uh, we, we kind of got lucky on that one. Um, you know, we were, we were challenging Brianna. It's like, hey, you know, when it comes to these desserts, I mean, it's hard to find just straight Roman desserts, but try to stick to Southern Italy and find like some crazy off the wall, like really good, simple dessert. Cause I mean, that's the thing is like, I, I'm a huge fan of like a dessert that looks underwhelming. And then you take a bite and you're like, what is going on? And so she came up with that. She found a recipe for this, uh, this roasted pear ricotta tart. And when she tried it, it was just like, hmm, okay, cool. It looks all right. And you take a bite and you're like, what is going on right now? Like, it's just freaking life changing. So it was really cool that she was able to come up with that. And, and it, it's just like I said, it, you see it and you're like, um, all right, cool. And you take a bite and it's like, I can't even comprehend what's going on in my mouth right now.